Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, I praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and I send peace and blessings to all of the prophets from the beginning of time, and especially to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions, and all those who called to his way and establish his Sunnah to the Day of Judgment. As to what follows, I begin with the greeting words of the righteous: Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him was the last of a series of messengers who came to every nation and every tribe. And the central teaching shared by all of these prophets was the teachings of Tawheed, of oneness, of unity, and the belief in one God. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a special prophet in that not only did he come to Arabic-speaking people, his own tribe, but he came to every nation, he came to all people, all colors, and all languages. And it is reported that one of the illustrious companions, Uqba ibn Nafi'a, radiallahu an, he was reported to have ridden his horse uh, from Egypt all the way across North Africa. He established the city of Qairawan. In 670, this base became one of the most central features of the Islamic establishment in North Africa. It is also reported that Uqba radiallahu an not only based himself there along the coast, but he turned south and he was involved in a number of missions into the great Sahara Desert. He, it is reported, reached Lake Chad and up until now there are descendants of Uqba ibn Nafi' who live within the desert region and remember their relationship with the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. By the year 705 AD, the leader of the Muslims in the north, Hassan ibn Nu'man, founded uh, an area that he called Ifriqiya. And this name uh, may be related to an ancient Phoenician name that was used by the Carthaginians in this region, or it may be an Arabic way of expressing a separation between the Mediterranean and the Great Sea of Sand. In any event, what is important about this terminology, Ifriqiya, is not only the fact that it was the central base of operations, but that it is the basis of the word Africa. So Africa itself comes from the Arabic language. And the fact that we are using an Arabic word in such a broad sense uh, is another part of the legacy that the world owes to the Arabic language and to those who are carrying the civilization and way of life of Islam to peoples throughout this world. The governor of Ifriqiya, looking south, realized that this sea of sand was actually leading to another civilization. Upon meeting caravans, he found that gold was coming from the deep south and that if caravans were organized in a proper way, then he would be able to benefit from the gold coming out of that area. So he dug wells along the way, and he set up oases. These oases uh, came the base, became the basis for movements from the north going down into the south. What we are recognizing about this area is that the Muslims were using the trade routes that had been established uh, very early in history uh, and that people had used from Roman times but what was different is that they were able to revolutionize the travel into the desert and to um, develop a system where uh, large amounts of goods could be taken from the north to the south 
and then taken from the south to the north. Now, if we look at these trade routes, we find that of the main routes, we find that uh, to the east of in the Sahara Desert was the route from Tripoli. And from Tripoli, you would go to Gadamis. From Gadamis, you would go south to Bilma. And when you reach Bilma, then you would finally uh, uh, continue on to Kanem Bornu. And Kanem Bornu became the basis of a very powerful civilization right around the area of Lake Chad. And it is said that the dynasty of Kanem Bornu was the longest freestanding dynasty of a family in the history of people on this planet. The other um, main route coming uh, more toward the center of the Great Desert was the trade route that started at Tahirat and then went to Tadmecca and then it descended south into Gao on the Niger River. And Gao became a very important center uh, of business and culture in that region. And so the connection was directly from the area of Tahirat. And these are people who are living just west of Qairawan. The third of the major routes was starting in Fes and going to Sijil Masa and then to Audagast and finally to Kumbi Saleh. This landed you in a great kingdom known as the Kingdom of Ghana. And so people were traveling literally across a sea of sand. The most important uh, group or agent for carrying people across were the Berbers and especially Sanhaja. The Sanhaja Berbers were known for their hardiness, their ruggedness and their ability to move through the desert uh, in rapid uh, 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 succession. And so they would give guidance and protection uh, to the caravans and take the people across this huge sea of sand. This required, of course, great patience and courage and an ability to, to know direction in the middle of what appeared to be an endless wasteland. But um, the, the goal of all of this was to strike it rich in the gold that was being mined uh, around the Niger River deep into the south. And so with these major trade routes developed, the people of the north uh, in Fes, in Tripoli, in Tahirat, and all the cities in the north on the coast became uh, extremely rich from the trade because they were bringing in different items from the Mediterranean, uh, even beads and different uh, coinage was coming in uh, from far north. Also, uh, different items of, of, of porcelain and, and leather was being carried south. And, and for that, they were carrying back gold, which became, uh, of course, the basis of economies and is probably the most sought-after metal uh, in existence. Now, from amongst uh, the tribes that were moving along, um, not only were the Sanhaja a very important group, but there was another set of tribes called Gudala, Lamtuna, and Masufa. And these Berber tribes were especially known not only for their hardiness and their courage in the desert, but their high sense of spirituality. So when these people came into Islam, they naturally um, became agents of the religion as well as the trade. And they formed a group known later as al murabitun And the word Murabitun is coming from Rebat. They are peoples of the Rebat, of the fortresses. In the Quran itself, the book of scripture of the Muslims, it is saying in Arabic, speaking to the believers, is saying, Uspiru wa sabiru wa rabitu, wa taqullaha la'allakum tuflihun. The believers are told to have patience, to compete with each other in patience, and to bind themselves together in ribat, and to protect the believers in fortresses uh, around the Islamic territories. And finally, the verse says, and have the consciousness of God and fear Allah in order that you would be successful. So the Murabitun became a very important force in the 11th century. And it is reported that they focused on three major issues. Number one, 
they saw themselves as calling the people to truth. Two, they repelled injustice wherever they could find it. And three, they forbade the taking of taxes in any form unless it was strictly covered or allowed in Sharia, Islamic law. The Murabitun loved the Sunnah. They loved the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And they tried to emulate Rasulullah in everything that they did. And so, when they established themselves in the area, they very quickly had a powerful effect upon all of the Muslims and non-Muslims who they encountered. They divided themselves into uh, two and then three major sections. In the northern section, um, Yusuf ibn Tashfin, uh, in the year 1061, became the leader, and he consolidated the area far to the north. And as we have learned in an earlier uh, uh, session, Yusuf ibn Tashfin, rahimahullah, he was able to go into Al-Andalus, into Spain, he assisted the rulers in the area, and he was able to repel um, the forces of the Trinitarians who were moving down um, from the north and in a position to begin to oppress the people again. Following this, they also broke themselves into another section um, which uh, was based in Marrakesh. And this is in present-day Morocco. And it is from the base in Marrakesh that uh, Amir Abu Bakr ibn Umar, rahimahullah, he was able to uh, develop a very powerful force. And his best uh, uh, general or leader was Sheikh Abdullahi ibn Yasin. And he really was one of the front runners of the Murabitun movement. And he succeeded in carrying the teachings of Islam far deep into the south, to the point where he even penetrated into the Niger River, into what is now known as Mauritania and Senegal. And he was able to teach people uh, in this area and establish a strong base for the Murabitun. So at one point in time, the Murabitun's holdings and their empire actually stretched uh, from deep south into the, in the area of Senegal to the north in Morocco, and then eventually right up into uh, Al-Andalus, into present-day Portugal and Spain. And they had a powerful effect upon the people of the north because they were um, very serious about their Islamic practices. They did not want to have a lot of uh, extra items around. They didn't like uh, bright, gaudy colors in the masjid. They didn't want people to be wasting money. But they wanted people to, to strictly sti stick to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yusuf ibn Tashfin was known to be a man, um, a very tall man, um, with a very stern look. At the age of 70 years old, he moved like a man of 30 years old. He ate very simple food. He prayed to Hajjud in the evening. And it is reported that when he came into Spain and found that the Muslims had become soft and they were not dealing with their Islam properly, he eventually took over the whole of Spain and revived Islam in a way that people were able to practice their faith and they were protected against forces that were out to destroy them all around. Let us take a break now and then come back to see what else happened when Islam penetrated the Sahara Desert. Welcome to this new episode of Focus Point. The new generation is has the good the habit of reading more than before. The Jewish question was named basically the problem of Jews who lost their function in society. Muslims reached the Sahara Desert, they found a great expanse. But they were fortunate 